Hey, what's up guys? Six on Buddy here. The MT8 final is decided. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. The road to the MT8 final gets closer, guys. And to be honest, it's probably the final that we all wanted. The two best teams on paper. Mamlodi Sundowns is going up against Orlando Pirates. The final is going to be taking place on the 7th of October at Moses Mabida Stadium again. But I have a problem. Yes, I have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. You know, every weekend, it's looking like it's almost every weekend. We're hardly talking about the goals. We're hardly talking about the saves, the assists, the tackles. What are we talking about? The poor officiating within the PSL. It's bad. It is so bad. You know, I remember the Mongo goal against Sakune. The Maseko tackle this past weekend. I mean, how, how was that not given as a penalty? The poor offside calls that were called within the Orlando Pirates versus Stellenbosch game. Look, I don't mind the referees making mistakes because they don't have VAR to assist them. But it's happening too frequent, way too frequent. And it's coming at a place where now people are starting to blame clubs on the fact that maybe they're paying officials, which is not the case. It's the poor officiating that is happening. And for me, this one I laid at Safa's door because Safa, you guys are the ones who provide these referees, man. You're the ones who are supposed to train them. Victor Gomes. I mean, you're supposed to be training these guys. They're deciding three points. They're deciding ties within the semifinal. And when you come off a game looking at some decisions like that, I mean, that, that tackle on them done, Sonny, guys, it was, it was so obvious, so obvious that I could not believe that it was not given as a penalty. And for me, we keep talking about VAR. It's been on radio, it's been on TV, but there are no timelines. And I'm looking at the leadership. When is this going to happen? When are we going to get VAR, really? Can you give us a timeline? It is such a need, and these officials need help. You can definitely see it on the pitch. And with the final that is coming on the 7th of, of October, the only thing I really want to talk about, like the only thing I really, really want to talk about is the football. So can we please get the officiating right? Man, I'm very excited about having the next guest on Playing the Field with Shakes, the last captain to lift the trophy with Keza Chiefs. Therefore, Masha Maite. Enjoy. He was an unbelievable center back. He was a winner, a leader, a captain as well. Therefore, Masha Maite, welcome to Playing the Field with Shakes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shakes, for a great introduction. No, nah, man, it's a, it's a deserved one, man. It's a really deserved one. Uh, what you gave to the game is something that I will never, never really forget. But there was one big talking point that happened over the weekend. So to have you here is great to ask you in the MTN8 semifinal. Was that a penalty on Saturday? Uh, well, I was actually at the stadium. So when you are at the stadium watching the game live, you don't really have a different um, perspective. Uh, what what you see, you know, happens so so fast uh, that you don't have the luxury of of replays. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where you are watching from um, in terms of the replay. Did it show that it hit his hand? Um, what 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 what's your opinion? Yeah, so when I watched it, I'm talking about the last challenge regarding Tabla Maseko oh. on um, Dantane. Um, that was the final play of the game. Um, yeah. I mean, do you when you yeah. saw it live and maybe when you did manage to see when you get home, what was your thoughts regarding it? Well, for me, it, it looked like a penalty. I also, I didn't uh, get to check the highlights. Yeah. I, it, it, it really looked like a penalty. So I don't know what, what, what the referee saw. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, decisions like that go on, uh, go a very long way into affecting, you know, the game. Um, I mean, like there's so many people who have put out so much energy, yeah. you know, to make sure that they get to the stadium. Uh, but at the end of the day, a decision as simple as that can really affect their emotions. Nah, I'm, I'm for sure, man. And um, that, mean, that meant that uh, Mamluri Sundowns are through to the final of the MTN8. I always ask myself, I mean, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mamluri Sundowns, you know, for years. You went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. They won trophies. You won trophies. The question I'm asking is, why have they pulled so far away from the rest? How do you see it? Uh, I think it's just down to the, their president's vision. 
uh, they have amassed a lot of quality both from inside the country and outside the country and I, I feel like they have raised the bar I mean winning all, all uh, so many championships uh, throughout uh, you know the, this this current years yeah. um, it really shows that they, they are an ambitious team uh, they're not only aiming uh, within the country but they, they are also uh, you know one of the best teams on the continent so I think it's just down to their president vision and the money that he has uh, pumped into this vision yeah. it's really showing on the play i mean they can always like make two 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 great teams if if they wish they have got so many players yeah they've got they've got so many players i mean you're you're definitely right about that they've got quality there they've got a structure they've got philosophy but also the president like you added was a a key point into where uh, Mamlodi Sundowns is at this moment. But the team they faced was Keza Chiefs. And they much yeah. might, because I have you here, because you were the last captain or the last player to have been there lifting trophies oh. with this phenomenal club. I mean, one has to ask, what has happened since then? How do you see it from the last time that you were, the glory days was at Keza Chiefs? Yeah, um, the, the, the last captain, uh, to, to leave the trophy part, you know, it's like a, a monkey, a monkey on my back. Yeah. And I, I had hoped that they win that semi-final, which I feel like they, they really did well. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I remember I was, I was talking to some guys on Friday and they were saying that in Pretoria it's just going to be a walk in the park. And it proved that Chiefs were really, really hungry mm -hmm. to win that game. And, the finals, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. But coming back to your question, um, I, I don't know because I, I was not privy to all the plans that were happening uh, around Naturena. Um, but it's been, I, I don't know, uh, I think seven or eight years uh, of mm. drought. Mm. I mean, for a, a team like Chiefs, um, it's, it's really unacceptable mm. to go that long without winning anything. Uh, I mean, you can see even now um, the fans get easily agitated. That mistake from Peterson in the first half, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fans, they started like p pressing the panic button. So this is like um, something that has been happening over over uh, the, the, the last seasons. And um, to be honest with you, I don't know, but I feel like this year they've really changed the tune. Um, they have amassed um, a couple of quality players. Mm -hmm. And I hope... They continue to build uh, on what they have done this season. Yeah, I mean, you, you speak about the fans' frustration. Um, they've already been able to show it. I mean, I don't condone any forms of violence in any kind of way. But like you mentioned, it's been a drought for eight years at this current moment. And it could be nine. From a former captain, from a guy who was bringing all that glory to the club... I mean, does that hurt you too as well? To just see the club not being able to bring trophies ever since then? It, it hurts, my brother. It hurts uh, because this is something that has never really happened. You had situations in the past where Chiefs would go uh, a long time without winning the league title. But during that, that, that period, they would be winning, you know, your Rothman's Cups, mm -hmm. your Cup. Your Paula and, and, and all those all those tournaments that used to happen back in the days. But this one has been uh, very, very different in terms of they never won anything, you yeah. know. So there, there is really uh, for the support, for supporters to, you know, to, to, to refer to, to say, okay, at least we didn't win the league, but we won, you know, such and such trophy. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of a, a disappointment and you really kind of like um, ask yourself as to what's happening. But like I said, I hope, you know, they get to change uh, this situation very soon for the, both the benefit of the brand and the supporters as well. No, 100%. It's a big brand. And even though a club that has gone eight years with, on a drought, they're still able to amass packed stadiums just to show the support mm -hmm. that they do have. Now, Mamelou Sanons are through. They'll be meeting Orlando Pirates. I mean, Orlando Pirates, they got past Stellenbosch. They could have been knocked out, but they threw on aggregate. How do you see that final playing out as the two big teams in the final? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a big one. Uh, I, I, I had hoped that it was going to be a solo to Derby. Mm. Uh, but Sundowns is a quality team. And I think it's going to be the repeat of last last year's semi-final. So oh. it's going to be an 
this thing one. Yeah, where 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 pirates uh put three past past sundowns and I'm sure sundowns they still had by that. <laughs> so they'll be looking to <laughs> to avenge themselves. So I mean it could go either way, but you did also mention that there's a potentially that it could also go the way that the last semi final went. Are you potentially mm. going with a pirates to defend their trophy here? Uh well, like in terms of neck and neck, um, I, I think Pirates are going to be, even though they are the defending champions, I mean, they are playing against an African giant here. I think they go in there as an underdog. Uh, but, you know, this is Pirates. Um, it's not just any other team. Uh, but, you know, Sundowns are used to playing in these kind of occasions. Mm. So it's going to be a difficult one. But I always prefer the underdogs, you know, to slay the Giants. So I'll be partly hoping that Paris beats Sundowns. But we'll see on the uh, on the day what happens. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have our prediction with regards to the final. I think it's going to be a really good game. Two of the best teams on paper at this current moment with South African football. Now that I do have you here on the show as well, uh, Dev Mashmaid, I need to ask you this. What's been your greatest achievement within football? Is it captaining the great vets? Is it captaining Kaiser Chiefs and the glory days? Is it the Bafana Caps? What what has been your greatest achievement within football, man? Uh, I think it's, you know, just taking here and there and you know put it to put it together and um create create that what you just said now the greatest memory or the greatest achievement um for me i'll start with my first season at vets um in coming from stars of africa yeah. and on my, on my third month i got to be given an ambent you know to lead the team and i remember there was a, a couple of you know, like veterans, um, people who have been in the game for a long time and to get that nod and be appointed the captain at the age of 22, for me, it was like one great achievement. It was a validation of, of my dreams and uh, what I wanted to achieve in football. Um, the second one obviously has to be um, when I was a captain uh, for Chiefs 2014-2015 when we won uh, the double and I went on to pick up awards. Um, that one you can't avoid. Another one has to be uh, the run that we had with Super Sport in the in the CAF Confederations Cup. Uh, mm-hmm. We lost in the final is TP Mazembe, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but just the experience of playing in the in the in the, in the CAF was just amazing. All the traveling that we did, all the difficulties that we met in countries like Sudan and Liberia. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just amazing. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. No, nah, man, uh, listen, um, that is quite, quite a career. And, uh, I hope that one day you happen to write a book. I've got two questions left. Um, the second last one I'd have to say is who has been the best coach you've played under? You've played under like Roger Sarr, Stuart Baxter. Yeah. You've played like under like really good coaches. And who's been the uh, best one that you had in your career? Yeah. I mean, like with, with, uh, Coach Farouk as Stars of Africa. Uh, it was an amazing time. Um, he's someone who's like a visionary. I mean, like he used to bring guys from Brazil, you know, your, your fitness trainers, mm. um, you know, people, I mean, motivators. And I remember there was a time when, um, coach Carlos Alberto Pereira visited the, the academy. Um, the residence where the players lived and it was an uh, amazing moment. A great coach, a great motivator. Mm. Um, I've played under coach Bobby Solomons, mm. uh, when I played, uh, the, the reserve team at Vets. He is the one who really like, um, created so many opportunities for me, exposed me to professional football. Obviously, Roger Disa, you know, um, uh, giving me the ambent, you know, uh, when I was like only 22 amongst the, 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 the veterans of the game and just how he approached football is one man who really motivated me and gave me, you know, the wings to fly. Mm-hmm. Um, another, obviously, uh, Stuart Baxter at Chiefs. Um, I remember when he first came through, he had just replaced Vivi and I had just had a, a disappointing season, my first season at Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And he came he reignited my career because there were talks that I was going to be transfer listed but he came through and he, he brought a revival into my career and my game no amazing amazing what an amazing career as well the last question that I have is 
He was an ambassador of MTN8, a great ambassador. I think MTN8 did a very good one in picking you. Um, they have a Thank great you, initiative for the fans. Um, can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, I mean, like, um, you see what MTN is trying to do is just, you know, making sure that all the stakeholders of the game, whether it's the fans, whether it's the legends, you know, whether it's the journalists like yourself, uh, have an opportunity, you know, to win great prizes that they are offering during the tournament. Um, there's a, a last fan standing um, and there's a number that uh, in order for you to stand a chance, you have to, you know, dial it star 144 star 8 hash. You recharge with uh, 10 runs or more and you buy uh, bundles and you stand a chance, you know, to win um, 8 million worth of prices uh, from fridges to plasma TVs to all sorts of things. Mm. And uh, encouraging all the fans to, to, to try their luck, enter the tournament because it's a season of winning with MTN 8 Wafa Wafa. Yeah, it's Katsuku by Extra. Um, if, if you don't have air time, you can always, uh, dial star 136, star 2 hash, and you, you, you get air time in advance, and then you enter with that number that I mentioned before, and mm-hmm. you also and the chance to win. There's another category which is uh, lost journalist standing. I feel like that's for you, Shakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where you get to be tested, your your knowledge of football will be tested in terms of the history of the MTN eight. Uh, you can ask to me to send you the link, and um, you you enter the competition, and I, I'm putting my money on you, my brother. <laughs> 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 no man, I will uh, definitely be on uh, watch there, especially for the journalist one, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, Tev, yeah. thank you so much for being a great guest. I really do appreciate it, man. And uh, hopefully, with all that you've said, there has to be a book one day or something. Uh, you, you, I'll, 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 I'll give a, a great uh, shout out to you in the book uh, for obviously believing that, like, I have a story to tell, and uh, it's something. That, like I've always thought about and one day I'll put it into it, you know, just to document, you know, my memories, but also uh, obviously um, looking to inspire the next generation of, of footballers. Now, 100%. All the best with what you've got going on. An amazing captain, man. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much, my brother. Keep well, man. Thank you. Who was up to par and who became our star, but also... Who fell short in this game we all love? Let's find out on Muhu of the Week. Let's kick things off with the star of the week, Peter Shaolile. Two goals in the semi-final. You know, he pressed Peterson, scored the goal in under 10 seconds as well on his weaker foot. The first goal for me is like, I get the press, but just the fact that he was able to go all the way to the left and finish off with his left foot. Absolute class. The Muhu of the Week. Guys, we have two. Tumuhus, yes. The first one, Lukolo Badi. That was the ref in the Sundowns versus Chiefs game. Guys, I don't mind refs making mistakes. I will say it again. But when it's happening right, like right in front of them, I could not believe that that call was not given. So he's the first Muhu of the week. Number two, he's a guy I respect. He's a guy I love. And he's a guy I follow. And he follows me too. The Komodise. Hmm. It's got to be you, man. Respect is there, no doubt. I got respect for this guy without a shadow of a doubt. But during the game, when that penalty in- incident happens, he says to Mark Gleason, it's a penalty. And then after the game, watching the same replays, he says, it's not a penalty. <laughs> Those are my mohus of the week. It's time for Bet of the Week. Get ready to win big by placing the right bets on the right games. We got six games to look forward to this week in bed of the week. Firstly, Real Madrid going up against Las Palmas. I've gone with Real Madrid straight win. Sundowns against Stellenbosch. Sundowns straight win. Inter against Sassuolo. Inter straight win. Lincoln City against West Ham United. West Ham to win, obviously. Liverpool against Leicester. We've gone with Liverpool straight win. Napoli against Udinese. Napoli to win that game. Six games, six odds, six times your money back. If you want to win with me, click on the link below. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show. Now I want you to do two things for me. Number one, first like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future episodes. And then number two, 
DSTV Premiership, Carabao Cup, La Liga, Serie A, all that action tonight. Good people, I release you. See you next week. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. We believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. We believe. I believe. Believe in the box with a risk-free bet. And if they lose, we'll refund you in cash. Betway, official Springbok sponsors.